Each country is receiving <clears throat> considerable amount of income as a result of the decade-long rise in commodity prices. Venezuela, the primary example, is an exporter of petroleum, and it's dependent upon that export for its economic well-being. Currently, petroleum exports account for approximately 80% of total gross national product. Over the past five or six years, the populist government of Hugo Chavez and his successor, Nicolás Maduro, have drained the profits from the National Petroleum Company, known as PDVSA. That money has been used by the government not to change production within the country or even to enhance production of petroleum. PDVSA, in fact, is being starved of investment capital. But the Venezuelans have used that money for social purposes, especially in the electoral campaign of 1912, when the Chavez government used approximately $250 million to essentially buy votes by giving gifts to people they considered to be potential voters. In the Argentine case, the government of Cristina Fernández de Kirchner has used its share of the export profit to pay social services and recently announced an increase in those subsidies of approximately 35%. In both cases, the funds have not created a stable economic situation. In fact, the excess profits have created staggering disequilibria within the economy. Venezuela, again the most extreme case, has had to import food and because no one wants to invest in any other activity beside petroleum, and they can't because it's controlled by the National Petroleum Company, the result is a constant need to import goods at higher and higher prices. Other countries, principally Brazil and Chile, have dealt with their surplus in ways that have at least diminished the disjunctures or disequilibria within the economy. Chile has done so by encouraging foreign investment, both in copper and in other areas. It has also used a smaller portion of its windfall for social programs. In Brazil, the economy is sufficiently diversified so that the windfall profits have not created massive disequilibria in the economy. The answer seems to be that you must have macroeconomic policies designed to make the disequilibria as small or as inconvenient as possible. Will other countries, such as Bolivia, Peru, and Ecuador, manage to come up with macroeconomic policies that keep the, government, uh, that keep the economy in balance? That remains to be seen. Meanwhile, the overarching issue is how commodity exports can be made to profit the economy in the long term.